phylum nematoda, the roundworms. Basic characteristics. First, notice the appearance of the pseudocloam. The fact that a roundworm is a pseudocelomate differentiates it from our flatworms. These are the first these are the first organisms that have a body cavity. Given the fact that they're pseudocelomates, it makes them tripto triploblastic, which means that they have an ectoderm, an endoderm, and a mesoderm. As you can see in our bo both examples of our roundworms, they're both rounded. They exhibit bilateral symmetry, and they have a complete gut, which means that there's a one-way movement of food from the mouth through the body and out of an anus. Roundworms are the first to exhibit cephalization. Some roundworms are free living and some are parasites. Even though we see some increase in complexity, gas exchange and respiration still occurs through simple diffusion. There's no true respiratory organs. Our roundworms do have muscles that run the length of the body. They have longitudinal contractions which allow the, front, the back end of the body to be moved towards the front end of the body and, and then pushing the front end of the body forward. The hydrostatic skeleton, the fluid within the pseudocolum, provides a rigid support for muscles to work against. Very similar to our flatworms, there's a nerve ring at the anterior end and two nerve cords that are at dorsal and ventral. Ganglia at the anterior end coordinates responses. And roundworms are sensitive to chemicals and touch. Some can tell the difference between light and dark. However, they do not have the eye spots that are exhibited in flatworms. There are no true circulatory organs. Internal fluid and diffusion is facilitated by body movement. As far as reproduction and development go, roundworms exhibit sexual reproduction. They have internal fertilization and use copulatory spicules to hold the vulva of the female open. So as we can see, the male in with produces sperm in the testes. The sperm duct moves to the end, and there's this copulatory spicule. What happens is it holds open the vulva and allows the sperm of the male to enter into the uterus of the female. Eggs of the female are microscopic, and they are chitinous, a chitinous shell, which means that they are protected by chitin. In parasitic roundworms, more than one host may be needed in order to fully develop from larva to adult. Some examples of roundworms are hookworms. Hookworms are found in warm climates where people often go barefoot. When the barefoot comes in, or when the uh, hookworm comes in contact with the human skin, it cuts away. It cuts away inside and travels through the bloodstream to the lungs. Once it's in the lungs, it moves then through the windpipe and up through the esophagus into the back of the throat, where eventually it's coughed up and swallowed into the stomach. The parasite then moves to the intestines, then moves through the intestines, and feeds on blood and other tissues. Eggs are passed through the intestines and released to the external environment through the feces, where they mature in the soil, develop into the larvae, which then re-enter the foot, re-enter through a foot. Trichnia cause tri causes trichinosis. Humans can catch this roundworm by eating raw or undercooked pork. After ingestion, the worms mature in one or two days. The worm travels through into the stomach, where the worm matures in one or two days. Females then, with fertilized eggs, burrow through the intestinal walls 
of humans or pigs, the eggs hatch and move into and move into muscle cells, forming painful cysts. This can happen again in humans, pigs, or other mammals like rodents. The most common worm infection in humans is ascreosis worms. These eggs are found in tropical and subtropical climates. They enter the mouth through the body and live in the intestines. Infection can result infection results from eating unwashed veggies and from contaminated soil. Pinworms are the most common infection in the United States. The highest incidence of infection is in children. At night, the female at night, females leave the anus and lay, they leave the anus and they lay eggs on the skin. When the skin's scratched, the eggs are transferred to the hands and then to any other surface that's touched. Eggs can survive for up to two weeks and are ready to hatch if anyone else ingests them. This is most often seen in children, especially children, especially children that put a lot of things in their mouths. These pinworms can, as I said, live for about two weeks. These pinworms can live for about two weeks. So a child scratches while it's sleeping if it doesn't wash his hands, touches any kind of toys, doorknobs, handles, touches anything. It can then be transferred to another person and ingested through the mouth. Filarial worms cause a disease called elephantitis and is found in tropical areas. A mosquito sucks the blood from a person who's infected and the worm embryos are passed into the insect's bloodstream. The embryos grow in the larva and is passed to another person when the mosquito bites them. Adult worms accumulate in the lymphatic system and instruct the flow of lymph. This causes fluid to build up and causing legs and other body regions to enlarge. Another type of filarial worm is the heartworm, which is common in dogs and cats in the United States and is also transmitted through mosquito bites.